guys, my name is Crystal and welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome old subscribers, welcome new. If you like my videos, please press the like button and please do subscribe. As you can see, we've got the sun shining through the window today. It's the sun's out in the mornings and then it tends to go in later on. I've put the heating on which I do for approximately an hour and then I will turn it off till this evening and in between days I will catch a shower but the gas isn't lasting very long at the moment um, so Alexa what's the time please the time is at 8.21am Alexa what's the date today Today is Tuesday the 11th of October. And Alexa, what's the weather like? Alexa, the weather? In Rochester, it's 6 degrees Celsius with mostly cloudy skies. Today, we can expect intermittent clouds with a high of 15 degrees and a low of 6 degrees. And Alexa, can you tell me a joke? Alexa, a joke? Here's what I found. Alexa, can you tell me a joke? Here's what... I, I don't know. Alexa can hear me. She can understand what I'm saying, but she's not telling me a Thanks joke. Thanks for the feedback. She's not telling me a joke this morning. Alexa, can you tell me a joke? What did the coffee say to the cream? It's hard for me to express on myself, but I really love you, Renate. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I love coffee myself, Alexa. I love lattes and cappuccinos. And the Costa has its gingerbread latte towards Christmas, doesn't it? It's gingerbread latte, but it's cream. And sometimes a little gingerbread man on top. So that's why I look forward to, you know, although the darker nights are drawing in, there's other advantages to, get to getting towards autumn and winter. You know, those lovely, hot, delicious coffees in the coffee shop, the Christmas decorations that light up uh, the room at Christmas, and the lovely music that comes out as well towards the end of the year. You get some nice songs, don't you, to cheer you up when it's cold and it's dreary and it's dark. So there are other things to look forward to, even though, you know, you can feel quite hemmed in and trapped when it's really, really dark early and you can't really wander outside because I wouldn't in the pitch black. To be honest, I need to take Max quickly for a walk around the Rochester Riverside, which I did last night. So, pretty much the same as usual today. It's, I know it's pretty boring, um, but that is what life is. It's repetitive. And it's the circle. If you go round and round and round, doing the same thing every day for years. Some people do it for years, the same job, the same husband, but that's a good thing, it's not a bad thing, because it can be quite lonely by yourself, it can be quite lonely not interacting with other people and going, uh, you know what I mean, so it's a good thing to be with a wife or a husband for years, it's stability, it's love, it's affection, it's wonderful. For people that have stuck together for years, I admire. I admire them because that didn't happen to me. But you've got the choice. Do you stay in a relationship which is not right and stay together for years, arguing and shouting in front of the children, etc., etc.? Or do you, 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 you break that and leave? 
So for those that have managed to stay together, you know, it's an amazing thing to find someone that you really get on with and, and you stay together because that's not the case all the time. I love it when I see an elderly couple holding hands and they've been together for ages but really love each other, not, not with each other, putting up with each other. They really love each other, don't they? It's amazing, it's wonderful, and I love it. There's not much about that about these days. Um, but once two people click and they stay together forever, it's wonderful. Like the Queen and Prince Philip did. I mean, they both lived to a long age and they stayed together. And whatever happened during the course of their marriage, they worked it out and they stayed together. And whatever people say, no one could take that away from them. They are now together forever. <coughs> the trouble is, when you do get divorced, it's very difficult to find another relationship. Um, so, you know... When I first left my husband, I was completely lost, dumbfounded, and I didn't know what to do with myself. I'd never been alone, uh, let alone, you know, alone with no money and nowhere to live, because that's what happened to me. I, I left my husband, I was alone, I had no money and I had nowhere to live. I went bonkers, I went crazy, I screamed, I shouted. So I had to get on with it. And here I am, by myself. I got divorced in 2008. Um, 14 years on, I'm still by myself. I've had various on and off relationships that just haven't worked out because I'm an older woman now. And I think that I've just resigned myself to, to the fact that I, you know, this, this is my life. I've just got to get on with it. It's no good moaning or complaining or forcing yourself on people. You've just got to get on with it. And that is exactly what I'm doing now. I get up in the mornings. I've got my routine. I feed my cats. You know, you do your washing up. You tidy up your bits. You take, I take Max for a walk. Um, if I need things for the shop, I go and get it. I've got no one to go and get things for me. I've got to do it myself, whether I'm in pain or not. And, and that, that's it. But some women find themselves in relationships where they're on their own anyway. Their husband doesn't help them. Their husband or partner is abusing them. They are staying in a relationship where they are hit. They are mocked. They are told they are ugly, unwanted, and the husband or partner is taking their money. And they're just stuck in, a, in, a, in an abusive relationship. And I would say to those women that from my, my, my experience, that if you stay in an abusive, violent relationship, that's going to be worse, worse absolutely worse because they hit they hit you and then it they that's their ticket to keep doing it once they've hit you and you stay with them it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and the put downs you're stupid you're silly you know and in my case i i told one of my partners what my dad had done to me what he'd done to me. So he started doing it to me. You know what I mean? You, you, you think, oh, telling somebody what's happened to you is a good thing. And then you t tell a prospective partner, look, I need to tell you something. Can you be gentle with me? This has happened. And then that partner starts doing to you what you've told that your dad's done to you. You know what I mean? And that's disgusting. That is evil. And that is another thing I've had to live with, you know. If you do open up and tell somebody what's happened, and they, they're either sympathetic, and some of them decide, right, oh, she's been, oh, let me, her dad hit her, well, let's have a go at that then. I, I have been beaten, I have been sexually assaulted, 
by several partners. I have um, been talked to like shit. So when I, this is why I'm hypersensitive. When I go outside and somebody is rude and nasty to me, whereas another person would say, oh, fuck it, you stupid cow, whatever, and walk on, I am hypersensitive because of what's happened to me. So, you know, going into another relationship probably isn't the right thing to do, right? But, you know, I'm 54, and basically I would be happy to just talk things through, like in a little group or something, but that doesn't work out either. I went to a domestic violence group up at All Saints, and, you know, it just didn't seem real. What well, You know, it just didn't seem real to me. You know, I have really been beaten. I've really been sexually assaulted. I really feel the pain on a day-to-day -day basis. And I can't get the help and support I really need because people don't take it seriously or they give me the wrong type of counsellor. When I, I don't need a psychiatrist because I'm mental. I need a psychiatrist because these men and what my dad have done to me have fucked my head up. Made me hate people so much that sometimes I can't go out my front door because I think people are against me. Now that isn't paranoia. That isn't mental illness like I'm hearing and seeing things. That is because these men that have abused me have fucked up my head so much. I am scared to speak to people. Whether you call that a social phobia or, or damage that's done by being abused, I don't know, but I don't think it's a mental illness, as in I'm mad. Do you? trauma that I have had since I've been a baby, since to, to the age I am now, you know, you want it to stop. You want to live your life in freedom and peace from torture and cruelty. And when I couldn't get a taxi on Sunday, you know, some people making it out, so I'm so ugly, I couldn't get a taxi. I can't see what's wrong. Just because I've cut my hair and it's grey, I can't get a taxi to go home. Do you know how many different types of people get into a taxi? Drug addicts get into a taxi. Alcoholics. Really, really ancient old ladies with false teeth get into taxis. You know? Come on.